Hello and welcome back to Buggy. It's taken a while putting this together as it's been challenging to get a load of decent images and the permissions to use them. But we've done our research and our diligent hunting for copyright permissions, so here's the next video. It's potentially not the finished video as we don't mind updating these videos as new information comes to light from good people like yourselves. You can share your stories and information in the comments or drop us an email. Hosting videos in this way does mean view counts get reset if we re-upload a new version, but sometimes it's worth it. Leaving a more interesting and accurate video on a subject is our motivation. In this episode, we'll look at Bugsworth now and then. To make things a bit simpler, take a moment to familiarise yourself with this map of the basin and what we'll do is we'll put it up on the bottom left hand corner on certain images to let you know where the picture was taken. Get ready with your finger on the pause button. We'll give a brief history on the restoration of the basin and compare old maps and images. We've even added some CGI to bring some memories back of the past. We're going to piece together some old images of Nat Hall East lime kilns and talk about their destruction. But before that, I want to give a huge shout out to some amazing folks who've made Bugsworth Basin what it is today. First up, big thanks to all the volunteers who took time out of their lives to lift Buggy out of the rubble. Rain, hail or shine, these guys have put in the hard graft. Seriously, without their dedication, people wouldn't be enjoying the basin like they do today. and many thanks to Ian Edgar for rallying all these people together. Ian has been a driving force behind a lot of the restoration work here, and he's only recently stepped back from managing the basin. He's given a large portion of his life to the love of Buggy. I approached Ian before making this video, and he was kind enough to connect me with someone special, and that someone is Don Baines. Without his hard work in the basin and his love of photography, we wouldn't be able to see the memories of the rebuild as we do in this video. So a quick thanks to Don, Furnace Vale History Society, Mark Lomas, and everyone else who's donated a picture to this project. Some of the old images I've got hold of are pretty low res. But I know they exist in better quality, so if you've got a copy, feel free to send them over. So I've been playing with AI for a few months and I'm using some to enhance these photos. I'll do you an on-screen demo and show you what they can do. So on the left we have the AI enhanced image and on the right we have the original. AI doesn't just bunch pixels together like traditional sharpening filters, it actually looks at the content of the image. And if you look at the tiles there, it's actually given it some extra texture by the looks of it. So for those who hadn't noticed, this is the upper basin and the navigation in. Let's have a look in the backyard and see what they had in there. Now you can see there are two carts. The AI's definitely improved it. 
Let's quickly zip over to the warehouse and have a look at the stonework. I'll put them about the same size. There you go. And lastly, let's look at the wagons and see what the AI has done for that. Considering AI is in its infancy, I'm really impressed. I can't imagine what it's going to be doing in a few years. OK, enough on AI. So we're going to go back now and have a look at the basin and some comparison photos. I'm not going to go really into depth on each area because it would be a very long video otherwise. So coming up in the future there's going to be some videos on specific features of the basin and some of the interesting things we've found out. We were quite lucky to get this footage a year ago before there was a collapse at the Stone Crusher building and it's now completely fenced off. But that's for another video. Let's go and have a look at Don's photos. So the next picture is some of the volunteers clay puddling one of the arms. That arm there pretty much has never really held water properly. So you can see what they had to work with. All the buildings were ruined. All the stone had been robbed since the 30s and it was just in a really bad state. The idea of tackling this to most would seem like a mammoth challenge. But Ian and many other strong-willed volunteers took on the challenge. Work on restoration of the basin started in 1968. Various hurdles had to be overcome. The proposal of turning the basin into a marina. And basically wiping out the historical site was followed by the threat of the A6 bypass being built right through the basin. Ancient monument status was applied for and granted protecting the basin and forcing the bypass to be diverted around it. In 1992, volunteers of the Inland Waterway Protection Society obtained a 50-year lease, which allowed them to restore, manage and operate the basin. The restoration received mainly a positive response. But as you'll see from the next picture of Teapot Row, also known as Canal Cottages, the effect on everyday life had left nerves raw for all to see. The delightful poster reads, British waterways have risked our lives for three months, violated our health and safety, mending this leaky ditch so the rubbish can float in. Happy Easter. Joking aside, I can see why tempers flared looking at the pictures of what was going on around them.
like this sinkhole that appeared outside the cottages in 1991. And as if water from the canal wasn't worry enough, Black Brook flows behind the cottages and in winter, it's more of a river than a brook. So I can see why having the restoration of the canal in front of the cottages could have been seen as a pointless venture, as all it had been since the mid-twenties was a leaky ditch. So this picture here shows when the canal wall was extensively reinforced to stop water getting into the cellars of those cottages. Thankfully, many years later, all's well on Teapot Row and it looks rather splendid with the canal at its side and there's no floating rubbish in sight. So besides the storm in the teacup, Easter 1999 the basin was in full use and the Peak Forest Canal saw a significant increase in use. But sadly after a very short period, the dry stone walling and the clay puddling deteriorated rapidly. Banks were damaged due to burrowing water voles and the use of powered boats which had previously never been seen in the basin saw walls collapse. This resulted in Bugsworth Basin closing again in October 1999. Contractors had to be brought in and the walls were reinforced. Also a large part of the basin was tanked. After a 1.2 million pound restoration, Bugsworth Basin was officially reopened on Easter Saturday, the 26th of March, 2005, when 94 boats attended the opening ceremony. So Ian, Don and all you amazing volunteers out there, I wanted to say a massive thank you. Your hard work has made a real difference. Still to come on this episode, we're going to look at the destruction of the Nathole Kilns. But first, let's take a look at the construction of the bypass. This picture is kindly contributed by a local buggy photographer called Mark Lomas, who runs the Bucksworth Reunited Facebook page. So looking over this image, you can see the bypass foundations being constructed. And there's the lower basin completely empty and overgrown. You can see the horse bridge hasn't been reconstructed yet. Now as we scroll down, you can see in the upper basin, there's a temporary Bailey Bridge. You can see its construction in Don's archive. The reason the Bailey Bridge was constructed across the upper basin is due to the demolition of the lane to Silk Hill. This was dug away as the bypass was put in. They then needed to put a bridge back onto the old road, so temporarily they used the Bailey Bridge to link Bugsworth Basin with Silk Hill. On this next image, I've highlighted the bridge and the road. If we scroll along, you'll see there's a little sign of its existence on Western Lane. Sadly, Buggy's listed status didn't save all of it and there was a large bit of collateral damage when they built the bypass. Nat Hole East lime kilns got completely wiped out. If we take a look at this image, you can see the remaining kilns, which are known as Nat Hole West kilns. These kilns appear to have been built in the early 1800s. The collapse you can see there happened in the 1890s almost 40 years before the basin was abandoned in 1927. I think the next black and white shot is taken from the top of this kiln looking towards the drone and across to St James's Church, Bugsworth. You can also see New Road Lime Kilns on the opposite bank. There'll be another video on that coming up. So I've highlighted Nathole West Lime Kilns in green. To the left of the green highlighted kiln stood another set of kilns. And that's the demolished Nathole East Lime Kilns. Nathole East and West Kilns were situated on the south side of the Middle Basin, 
in the hamlet of Nathole. Chinley Road, now known as Brookside, divided the two sets of kilns. These kilns were connected by two parallel bridges which were known as the Bugsworth Arches. Literally the only picture we could find of the arches. This picture's from the early 20th century and it's looking down the hill towards Bugsworth Basin and the Navigation Inn. And this is the bridge on side-by-side -side maps. These arches were constructed to take limestone to the west side of the kilns. They were decommissioned due to the earlier collapse of the Nathole West Lime Kilns in the 1890s. Work on demolishing Bugsworth arches over the Chinley Road commenced in September 1911 and by October the 14th of that year it was completed. This picture was taken in the 1930s from the Upper Basin. You can see the demolished Nathole East Lime Kilns in the back there and the workmen's huts. So this picture is the only picture I could find of the demolition of Nathole East Lime Kilns. They didn't blow it up like the CGI, no, they just nibbled at it by the looks of it. But they didn't destroy all of the kilns. Some of the draw holes still exist and are accessible and we'll go in there on another video. Hope you enjoyed that overlook on the restoration of Bugsworth Basin. Join us on another episode where we'll look at other parts of the basin in detail.